it is Friday, August 26th, and it's SketchUp Live Day. That's right. You heard it from Tom Cruise. We got the nod from Tom. We got the thumbs up. Uh, it's like Johnny Carson, you know, we got the uh, the approval from him. So, hey, we're bringing in Tom Cruise's own P-51 Mustang fighter plane today. Oh, wow. Another plane stream? You betcha. It's going to be a great one. It's good. It's a great plane. It's a great stream. Aaron's a great modeler, and that's why he's up front and center, <laughs> ready to go, uh, ready to host the show today. So, hot dog, let's get into it. Please welcome Mr. Aaron Dietzen. Shame. Well, <laughs> get that saving right off the bat. Man, no, <laughs> no, there, not even an opportunity to get it right. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. Uh, guys, if we have not met, I am Aaron, and uh, with me, that voice in your ears is Matt Robison. Uh, oh, sailor. That's the boy. It's right there. <laughs> this is going to be a fun one. This is going to be a good time. Uh, it's Friday. It's been a long week. Um, I'm glad to be here. It's been a while since I've been able to get on in live model uh, or even co-host or anything. So this is this is pretty exciting to get to be here. I, He's back. I, full disclosure, I just got done with COVID. I knew a lot of people who had it and were talking about it. So I figured I'd give it a shot. Um, it was, <laughs> it was not my favorite way to spend a week, but, uh, yeah. So, but yeah, back at it, back at it, swinging, doing the thing. Uh, it's going to be, it's going to be fun. So I'm very happy to be here today. I am too. Me too. Me too. Soundboard. <laughs> so, okay. <what's> <laughs> Right. Yeah, I can shut him off, guys. Just just to let you know if that's the case. I can I got this control over here. No. 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 Don't take away my voice. <laughs> uh, but yeah, welcome. This is going to be a fun one. A couple weeks ago, I guess it's about a month ago now, uh, Tyson got on and did a plane. He did, what did he do? He did the Spitfire. The Spitfire, that's right, uh, which is a World War II fighter plane. And uh, we asked you guys what else you would like to see modeled. And the one that came in after the Spitfire was the P-51 Mustang. So figured, well, let's let's just see how we could do that airplane too. Uh, I figured, you know, this way I don't have to plan or really think about it. We'll just get on and start modeling stuff and see what happens. I think figured that was a just get up great in way the to... air and uh, <laughs> right. yeah, start the dogfight. Pilot's license or planning? Nah. Just jump. <laughs> uh, Keggy's saying I'm a little low. I'll try to turn it up on my side, but um, I don't know. We may need to turn it up. Or I'll right. just I can just talk louder. Uh, I can. So Yeah, I definitely see. Hello, check, 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 right. mic, check. One second. I'll be right back. <laughs> we got the pros on the case, folks. So you are in luck. Oh, wow. And what a day it's going to be. It's going to be a great stream. Uh, not only sound wise, of course, your destination is on your left and we have a lot of those coming in, but we have a lot of great people in the chat as well, too. So thank you everybody from coming in. We have people from all over. I see France. I see, uh, Norway. Hello. Uh, Iceland, Georgia, uh, yeah, all over the place. Hello to everyone. Uh, Ove saying he's got another plane uh, request. We're going to be just doing planes every week over here. Boeing B-17 Flying Fortress. Ooh, it sounds cool. Is that like Howl's Moving Castle, but it's an airplane? Ooh, yeah. Put a couple wings on there. Now you're low, uh, but possibly peaking. <laughs> okay, I will try to not <laughs> yell anymore. <laughs> Just don't peek, Matt. All right. So with that, let's let's hop in. So um, just to give you guys an idea of the next month, how the next month of live streams needed to go, we're gonna stream today, obviously, and then we will have three more streams after that. Most likely, it will be Tyson, Eric, and myself. I don't know what order that will be in, but we'll all take a shot at it. And then there's gonna be a couple weeks where live streams won't happen at all because our whole team will be in Vancouver at 3D Base Camp. So, thank you. Base it's going to be good. <laughs> Yay, Base Camp! <laughs> uh, so, it will, uh, if, you guys, if you guys are going, 
please make a point to catch myself or Matt or Tyson or Eric or Jody and uh, just give us a high five and let us know you watch because it's so cool to get to, you know, connect these names that are in a little stream with real humans. So <laughs> if you can, just like I said, it's not going to inconvenience us. It's not going to bother us. It'll be fun to see you, like see a face and and uh, meet you for real. Uh, if you're not going to base camp, there is still time to buy a ticket. So it's one month or four weeks from Monday is the first day of base camp. So uh, we got time. You can get in there. You can still get a ticket. You can still get an airplane flight. You can still get a hotel. But that's all. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna sell that anymore. You guys know it's awesome. You know why that we think it's awesome. If you can join us, it would be even awesomer. So. All right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We, we know, we know that, uh, we know we recognize the names that come up each day, but there are human beings behind those names and, uh, Hey, heck I'm looking forward to reading some of you hopefully live. Yeah. That'll be very exciting. That'll be fun. All right. So with that, let's get modeling. Let's get this, uh, get this air show on the road. Vamos. All right. Uh, so I set up, I'm going to do this mostly, I guess this will have to go over here because uh, I can't see it over there. I'm going to model this airplane with sub D. So uh, I know Tyson dabbled in a couple different ways to create the shapes of an airplane. Um, so I know he, I'm going to quote him when he said some of them worked, some of them eh, he kind of made a noise like that. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to judge someone else's modeling. Judge not lest ye be judged, and I don't want to be judged. So, uh, but I'm just going to hop right into sub D modeling. So those of you who aren't familiar, sub D modeling is created using a series of uh, extensions. The primary one being sub D, which is a subdivision tool from TomTom. Tom. And what subdivision modeling does is it takes uh, geometry, flat geometry that meets at an angle, and then rounds out that angle. So super, super basic example here. Let me just show you. Uh, and we won't spend a whole lot of time on this. I just want to give an example. So if I draw a rectangle, and bring it up like that. I got a box. If I triple click and make it a group, what I can do is I can run subdivision on this. And this is what happens. It rounds off all the corners. So if we look at the hidden geometry, that's what, what happened. So this box turns into this. And what I can do then wow. is I can take that geometry and I can increase the number of subdivisions. So that takes each, what, what sub D does, it takes one face, breaks it into one, two, three, four faces, and then each of those faces is broken half. And then subdividing again does that. So each of the four, each face then gets broken into another four subdivided pieces until you get all the way up to the highest subdivision count, which will be four levels deep, which gives you much smoother geometry. You can see that, but it gives you a whole lot of faces. So there's an art to making a sub D model, a subdivision model, in that you don't want a so many small faces that you end up creating this super fine mesh that's really hard to work with. Uh, it's also a matter of working at the right level of detail. So I don't, if, as I'm working on the airplane, I probably won't go to this final mesh until the very end when I'm ready to output. Everything, the working mesh will probably be like level one, level two, uh, as we work through here. So that's to be fun. This is the, so this is the general idea of what subdivision is. To do it, like I said, I use this sub D software. Uh, this is a toolbar also from TomTom Tom called Quad Face Tools. And what Quad Face Tools does, it just makes it easier to select geometry. Um, and I'll see some of those tools as we use them. The other thing I'll be using a lot of is Vertex Tools. So Vertex Tools is another toolbar that uh, allows me to edit geometry by the points rather than the faces and edges, which is what SketchUp normally uses to edit geometries, the faces and edges. With uh, vertex tools, you can actually grab the points, you can grab points in mass, you can grab soft select them so that the ones that are further from the cursor move less than the ones close to the cursor. Uh, but that tool set makes it easier to move the points and it also respects quad geometry, which is very important when you're doing this kind of modeling. Uh, so yeah. So that was a primer. I understand that was fast. Hopefully, uh, if you haven't seen this kind of modeling before, you'll watch this and catch up on uh, what it is I'm talking about, what it, what it is I think I'm doing. So 
Uh, with that, let's go ahead and just hop in. I'm gonna go pull in that image I shared on our forum. If you haven't seen it or you're not familiar, forums.sketchup.com, Matt can drop a link to the page too. I did upload uh, a copy of this, this image that I'm about to grab up there. So if you wanna grab it, uh, you can. Not necessarily if you don't, I'm not saying try to follow along now, but if you wanna have it for later and try it out, go for it. Yep, and the link is in the description, the video description. So check it out there. I also put the link to SubD software in case you're interested in learning more about that. Awesome. All right, so I'm gonna import this JPEG. I'm gonna import it as an image. I'm gonna bring it in here and I'm just gonna throw it. In. I'm not worried about scale at this point. Um, <laughs> I know, I hear about this a lot. I know, I get it. I'm not, I, I don't make scale important enough a lot of times. Uh, I hear that. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, this is actually kind of a weird image. It's kind of a pain to work with actually because one of the three sides that I'm gonna be modeling from is facing the wrong direction. So it's, this is at 45 right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to option, move, copy that over here. And then I'm going to grab this, this copy and I'm gonna rotate it. I'm gonna go from like there all the way up through the nose and rotate that vertical. Ooh, all the way up through the nose, that hurt. You don't have an ouch sound effect for that one? Seems like that's a, that works. <laughs> Just make that myself. <laughs> it's like a septum piercing or something. I'm like, I don't know what uh, that. Not a fan. You? No. Uh, yeah, so there, so there we go. We got that. So now we have a straight on piece of geometry here got a side view here and a front view here. And those are the three pieces that we're gonna be able to work off of to get our geometry uh, looking the same. I'm gonna do this with components. I'm gonna put one component in and uh, I will like probably start with the overhead and we'll start creating the geometry and editing it. And then I'll take that same component, copy it over onto another view, edit it there. Maybe take that, put it under the third view, edit it there. And basically that will be the process by which we'll take this component, which will be half of the plane and get the blocked out geometry that we can run sub D on. Hopefully that's all clear as mine. Not harder. That's right. Yeah, no, hey, watch and learn. Just uh, sit back, relax. Show, don't tell. That's right. I'll do both. <laughs> uh, uh, we had a question. Yeah. Are there pocket holes on this aircraft? Ooh, somebody is uh, following us on more than one, one platform. Yeah, I think a keen uh, viewer, Keggy, Keggy Vacation, uh, referring to our our uh, podcast, our Donuts Design and Debate podcast. Uh, this week we debated about the design merits of pocket hole screws. Uh, check it out. It's on our YouTube channel here, but also your podcast app of choice. Um, yeah, a different time, not now. Now is plain time. <laughs> Focus. <laughs> <laughs> Stay on target. That's right. All right, so I'm going to use an, I generally start with an octagon. I'm actually double second guessing myself on this because I think what I want to do is as I look at this plane, see this nice, this is almost vertical surface right here. I think that tells me that I want to have like a vertical surface here and then have it. So I might actually use a uh, six sided shape. I usually go with eight, but I'm gonna try six. I'm gonna try to get as, as little geometry as I can here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lock to the green axis. I'm gonna type in six to do a six sided shape. And that's, like I said, I want the flat side on the side. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tap, uh, well, actually I'll just start drawing it out. And then uh, I can tap the option key to draw that green shape inside or outside of the circumscribed circle. So I want to have it go on the outside. I am not the slightest bit concerned with scale still at this point. I just want that shape and I want it in line with the center here. I'm only going to model half of this thing because it is symmetric. I want to model one half of it and then just make a copy on the other side. All right, I'm going to take that. I'm going to put that right here at the tip. Slide that back just a bit. There we go, right there. All right, and this is now going to be, uh, I'm gonna start extruding this out to make my different uh, sections of this plane. So when I do this, there, this is, we've talked about this before as some models where this ends up being kind of like sculpting. 
This is not uh, precision. There's not a rule that's like, do this many faces over this distance or this, whatever this shape is, deci decides to do something specific. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of do this a little bit by feel. I'm going to reshape this a little bit so it's about the size here. So about the size. You're going to hear that a lot. Approximately, more or less. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to push pull this through to about there. And then I'm going to hit option and pull another section out. It'll go back to, I'm not going to go that full length. I'm going to go about half that length. So I'm going to stay in option and keep pulling back chunks. Go all the way back to here. And maybe I'll go here. And this is where I start to taper. I want more control over my taper, so I'm going to put more faces in. Uh, when I have long shapes like this, that means I can only have one curve. So from here to here, I can at most have a single curve from here to here. As I start to taper back here, I'm going to want more options to kind of control how much I want to taper. So I'm going to put more faces there. I'll probably just do one straight through the tail and then one that goes all the way out to the end. All right, so those sections. So you can kind of see the airplane in there, right? <laughs> probably not. Yeah, not, not so, so aerodynamic much. yet, but uh, maybe a paper airplane. Have you ever seen those, like, it's a paper airplane, but it's like a um, like a circle, what is that called? It's a cylinder with, you know, the ends missing. You can throw it and it, like, spin it and it kind of... Yeah. Aerodynamics is crazy, man. I don't understand how it works. <laughs> Didn't do a good job of explaining that, but uh, oh, I'm no. sure Chad knows what I'm talking about. But yeah, this thing could definitely fly. All right, so... To do this next piece, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to camera and I'm gonna go to a top view. So I'm looking straight down on top. Now there is some uh, distortion here because I'm in, uh, I'm in perspective view. So my, my geometry as it comes up, it's getting wider as it gets away from the page down here. So I'm gonna go to parallel projection and now I can see kind of a one-to-one -one view. And what I'm gonna do now I'm going to go to view and I'm going to go to my face style and turn on x-ray. Now I'll grab this section right here and then what's the best way to do this? I'm going to go to, I'll use vertex tools and no, that's not a good idea. I'm going to use scale. I'll choose regular scale. Bring that in like that. Scale, bring that in like that. So, so one of the things that's going to happen is as I use sub D, generally speaking, uh, corners like this are going to get cut back. So what I generally want to do, and this is like I said, this is a little bit of experimentation and, uh, you know, do it and fail and try it again. But I generally try to keep my geometry outside of my my target shape so my, my control points end up kind of outside like this it's going to kind of suck in a little bit so right yeah it's going to pull in exactly anticipate Go. Gotcha. so just each of these eh. uh dave says i think jim Kindleberger drew the original plans for the P-51 this way. Our viewers, correct me if I'm wrong, probably know a thing or two about the P-51 and its history. Wow, that was an oddly specific <laughs> sound drop right there. <laughs> I was expecting to go, our viewers know a thing or two about a thing or two or something like that, but nope. <laughs> very, very specific sound drop. <laughs> Yeah, I, I hired a guy to uh, come on and talk <laughs> talk specifically about the P-51 here today. All right, I'm going to do a thing here. I didn't quite make that right, so I'm going to go ahead and drop this back a little bit and then scale this out like that. All right, and then I'm going to draw some new geometry for this, this piece out here. Uh, but that is the first part of that. All right, I'm going to grab all that. I'm going to make it a component. Uh, 
The body of a plane's called the hull. Is that right? Is that a boat thing? Fuselage? Fuse I can't spell that. We'll call it the body. I can't remember anything. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what it is. I'll take it. I do appreciate a good uh, Chipmunks Metallica reference. <laughs> That's what we should be playing at uh, at Christmas, you know. Forget all this Dominic the Christmas donkey or whatever. Why am I talking about Christmas when it's August? Who knows? Oh, so Matt is Matt's ahead of the curve. That's that's how he rolls. Always uh, riding the wave, riding the next, looking for the next thing, and the next big thing, Santa Claus. Apparently, I guess. All right, so I'm going to go to a top view here also, and go into context. And same thing here. So I I just again I'm just going to kind of just run through here. Grab this is these are super super broad strokes. So I'm going to go here, scale that up like that. Uh, bring this up. Bring this down. I might, I might second guess myself on this part, but I'm going to drop it down for now and see what happens. Hey, try. It's all about, uh, you know, trying and uh, improving from there. I, th I thought Mr. that was going Lee. towards failing for sure. Right. <laughs> Wait, I, had, I think I have a sound for that. Uh, I can't find it. It'll come up later. Um, Mr. JD in the chat, fuselage. Yes, thank you. Uh, because we have like the live transcription on uh, for accessibility purposes, there's a little bit more of a lag. So uh, probably trying to, I'm sure you had it exactly, but uh, we didn't respond to it till later. So. That's the reason why. Whoops. Whoa. What 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 the It's like we're in an airplane. Like I don't know which way is up. You gotta look for the horizon, you know. I don't know what just happened right there. That was that's freaking me out. All right. Let's keep going. Yeah, let's keep going and let's uh Dave says you'll need to further subdivide for the doghouse. Here I thought we were doing a plane. <laughs> oh, slow on the uptake. Whoa, I tried. I tried. Drummer lost his sticks. All uh, right. So we got a thing going here. So there's definitely uh, a couple spots that are going to need some love. Specifically, uh, we got we got spots that aren't going to be smoothed. So we got this uh, this thing right here, which I believe is called the carp mouth. And then uh, we got another thing over here, right under here, which I believe is called the clown smile. So <laughs> we're going to have to modify our our uh, geometry for both those pieces. We'll do that right now. Uh, so right here. We're gonna we're gonna start using. I'm gonna go into back into perspective view because non-perspective view makes me a little nauseous. And we'll come in and actually I'm gonna get get rid of this uh, uh, X-ray as well. All right, let's get back to let's get back to the real thing. All right. So what I want to do is I want to come in and I want to break this set of faces. So what's gonna happen right now is when I take this and I subdivide. And so we get that nice smooth shape. There's some issues going on here where it's pulling back in the back. We're gonna clean that up in just a second. But you can see how it's starting to smooth out. And you can also see what I was talking about, how stuff pulls in more. See how I am, I'm way shy over here? We're gonna have to compensate for that. But before I do that, I wanna get a hard break right here so I can put the, the cart mouth on. And I need another hard break right here to get the clown smile. So I'm gonna do that. Do you like how I did that without like any hint of irony of the fact that I have no idea what I'm talking about? Did you prepare this beforehand and no. you're going to keep this going the whole time and just play it cool? No, I'm just, I'm happy I remembered the terms that I just made up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're uh, making up a whole new language over here. It's like right. J.R.R. Tolkien on her hands. Mm -hmm. Wait till you see it written in script. So <laughs> this is where quad face tools comes into play. So when in quad face tools, I can do something like grab this line and then I can come up here 
and I can click uh, this button right here, which is, come on, tooltips. Don't it? Select ring. Is it because you already have it selected or? Oh, maybe. I'm off of it. Select ring. I don't know. Select the button number four on this long toolbar. Uh, what it will do is it'll select all the pieces going all the way around a shape. So all the edges got selected. Then what I can do is I can come in here and I can say, now insert a loop. A loop is basically just a face right here. Now I got to get a little bit uh, creative here because I got to figure out a way to get this pulled out here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this. I'm going to just option and copy it straight out like this and then connect this geometry back up like this. Okay, and that's going to give me, I did, obviously, a little bit of cleanup has to happen back here. Orient faces to get that cleaned up. But that gives me that little piece right there. The other one is, I believe, slip on here. Oh, right here. Right here. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'll just take this. I'm going to offset it out. And then just stitch this back together real quick. So at this point, like I said, it's a lot of roughing in geometry that I'm going to come back and clean up uh, later. One of the other things that's happening right now, and by doing that, by grabbing the face, moving it out, and connecting it back together, I've kept everything quadded. That's the biggest uh, issue with this type of modeling, is you want everything to be a four-sided piece that has four a piece meeting it on all four sides, and that's it. I don't ever want pieces connecting like at a star with five or six pieces. I don't want any, ideally don't want any triangles. Triangles, uh, uh, the sub D engine can handle, uh, but it's not the ideal way to do it. I didn't mention this before, but I do intend to model the wings uh, later on. We'll pull those out. Uh, but right now I just want to get the fuselage correct. Very, very good. Very well. All right. So here's the thing I'm running into right now. When I subdivide this, it turns into more of a this. Bloboid? That, yeah, that was it. That was it. Yeah, I forgot from the documentation what it's called. So <laughs> what I can do is I can come in here and I'm just going to start erasing these edges on the back. Bye-bye. Feels like that should have been a sound drop too. And then <laughs> delete that. Now, if I leave it open, this is kind of cool. If I subdivide that, see that? Those edges didn't pull in like they did before. Because there's not a face on this backside, it doesn't pull down because this is not a corner. It still pulls this way because this edge and this edge are still connected. So that edge gets smoothed. But this way, it's going to stay flat and honor that because it doesn't have an edge pulling it in. So... If you're going to model half of something like I am here, then that is the way to do it, is just get half of it modeled, leave the other half open. I know some people out there in the world of SketchUp have OCD and they got to they gotta close their models. They got to stay solid. Sub-D doesn't actually care about solid. All it cares about is quads. So you can give yourself a pass on this one. All right, but let's go back to... Nice. Let's... It feels good to let loose sometimes. And That's just, right. Uh, let it all the go. Wind. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. All right. So this is looking, this is getting there. This is, I mean, if I look at that profile, that's, that's not too, too terribly bad. I'm getting rid of hidden geometry. So there's a couple things that obviously have to get cleaned up here. Um, this section right here is looking okay, but obviously it doesn't jut out here. It should run smoothly back into the rest of the, the build or the building, <laughs> the plane. Same thing <laughs> over here. This guy actually needs to come out a little more. It needs to be, uh, you know, fairly straight to the front. Right there. Or I guess I guess it does come back at an angle. It's not too far off. Uh, but then it should just blend back into this inverse camel hump, is I think what they call it. So let's go ahead and get that. That's tackled. right, the camel, camel slung. That's right. Uh, camel so, belly. So here's but... another piece uh, that I'm gonna need to get out here. There's a couple ways I could do this. Here's what I'm going to try. I'm going to grab these three faces and offset them. Bring them way down like that. 
uh, and then connect that up and then grab this face, which is a quad that is a four sided piece. And then I'll pull that out. Like I said, past where I want it to, to run and try subdividing that. Maybe went a little too far. Let's bring it back in just a little bit. All right, that's, that's pretty close. Maybe just, just a touch back. So it looks like you have a keyboard shortcut for your subdividing and stuff. Do you have your key logger on? I think we all know I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to blame COVID on that one. Okay, there Maybe we go. There. Speaking How's of uh, keyboard shortcuts, we had some people requesting for the Command S shortcut. Shave. Holy guacamole. Let's get this thing named. Mustang. Mustang. Um, yeah, it was actually uh, T Doll over on the forum called me out for calling it uh, a P52 Mustang which I don't know what a P-52 is, but I consistently twice in the original description typed P-52 over P-51. So I think it's just one better. What? <laughs> yeah. Hey, maybe that's my excuse. You know how I always make that excuse how this is my version? Maybe this is a P-52? <laughs> All right. Get the pre-release, the beta plane over here. All right, so now I got to get this piece closed up. This is exactly where I would start using vertex tools. I have a shortcut key for vertex tools as well. Both my subdivision command and my vertex tools are mapped to U and V because I'm a, so original. And they're both on my, my 3D mouse. So there, I have two program, programmable buttons right here on the right side. Uh, one is sub D, one is vertex tools. So if I'm gonna select this line, pre-select this edge right here, hit vertex tools, and then I'm just slide it straight up the red axis like that. And now, I'm gonna come out and grab this line right here and use vertex tools again. This time I'm gonna slide it back on the green axis a little bit just to give myself something like that. Like geometry is gonna kind of disappear into uh, my subdivision. So when I hit you just now- Hold it in like bread dough. Yeah, see how that kind of just disappears into it like that? That's what I'm looking for. All right. Um, and one of the commands I have on the sub D toolbar, which is right up here, I do have this button, which turns off all geometry or all my edges. So I can just see that mesh. So I, whoop, uh, I th it's not supposed to be there. That can't be right. Uh, State in the chat was talking about, can you turn on and off the ISO line display? Is that what those was referring to with those lines you think? Could be. I don't know what that means, but I would buy that. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Let me drop that back down. Try that again. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, slow Something's down, buddy. Something's going funky over here. All right. There we go. All right. Now let's subdivide. Oh, much better. Cool. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this drawing. I'm just going to keep, just keep copying it around. Uh, and it's like Tyson's look. model over here. Yeah, <laughs> just just stuff everywhere. <laughs> um, well, I guess I could also take a look like this. So obviously, I got some cleaning up to do right here. Let's unsubdivide. And I'll just come in here, grab this geometry, slide it up like that, grab... Yeah, I definitely have to, I have to spread this out some more. Let's bring that back here. I'll grab this, bring it up here. So you don't have to use vertex tools uh, to move this kind of geometry. It's just regular SketchUp geometry, but sometimes it's just easier to pick the, the pieces that you want to move. Is that right? Yeah, so, the, the, so there's a couple things that vertex tools does that make it, oops, I, I moved something through right there. Uh, so there, there's a perfect example. So, so that was pretty easy. I got that moved around fairly well. Uh, this one right here, I want to move forward, but this line is not parallel to much. So as I start moving, you can kind of see when I bring it 
for I just want to bring it forward, but if I bring it forward, see those extra lines showing up? Those are faces breaking right now. That's this stuff shouldn't <laughs> happen. I don't want that. So if I do that instead with vertex tools, so vertex tools is a couple things. One is it lets gives me these handles so I can just move stuff. Oh, what's going on there? So I can just move stuff in one one axis, then another and another. I can just kind of do this kind of thing. And mm -hmm. it will never break the geometry like that. So this will never go in and uh, break my quads. It'll always honor my quads, which is kind of kind of essential to this kind of modeling. But yeah, so this this just makes it makes it a lot easier to do. Uh, one of the mm -hmm. things that, like I mentioned, as you use vertex tools, you're moving the uh, vertices as opposed to the faces and edges like you do with normal SketchUp. Uh, but it can be kind of a pain to go in and select, right? Because so right here, to move this face with vertex tools, I'm actually moving this point, this point, this point, and this point. To go in and select all those points in vertex tools, so if I just have nothing selected, it means coming in and picking each point. If I pre-select geometry, so I just grab this piece right here and then hit vertex tools, it'll automatically figure out what vertices I want selected and uh, mm -hmm. pick them. So there's a little bit of back and forth where you just kind of drop out and then back into vertex tools, that kind of thing. Uh, which like I said, with a shortcut key though, that becomes kind of a not a big deal. Pretty easy. All yeah, right. second nature almost. Almost. All right. That's looking looking pretty pretty fly. Nice. Wait. <laughs> Got to work on that. <laughs> I need a keyboard shortcut for that. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll do my best to to keep you keep you needing that one. Right. <laughs> so I'm gonna keep doing some some uh, just editing, and this is this is the essence I think of subdivision modeling is it's basically sculpting. You know, I'm going to go ahead, subdivide, take a look at it, figure out what I got to clean up. That is looking pretty sweet. I don't like the way this comes up. I think this is supposed to be going like more down and back. So uh, I'm going to I'm going to mess with that just a touch. Um, there, too. See that scale? See what that did? That broke it. So I'm at the point right now where I got to do a lot of my editing with vertex tools. Vertex tools does have a scale, too. I was using the arrowhead to move, but the opposite side, little little square here, will let me actually do some scaling. So I can scale, move, grab another set, scale, move. And people uh, familiar with other types of 3D modeling software, probably this comes, is looks pretty familiar to you. Um, that could be. So it's nice if you have kind of a background or some experience in uh, you know, in that type of whatever solid modeling or something to uh, yeah, if you're you know, a, a nerb modeler, stuff. not calling names. Nerbs, nerbs. You're into the whole nerb thing. That's cool. All right, so that's looking pretty pretty solid um, for a non-solid piece, but there's definitely some issues. Dang, I, can't, I just can't help myself. Um, <laughs> So obviously, uh, my clown face here, not it's not perfect yet. Uh, this piece too, because when when I come in and uh, when I do that, you know these pieces are are kind of blending in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these three edges, and I'm going to do this all at once. Let's see what happens. And these three edges, and I am going to crease them. Oops, I did not hold down control, so I didn't get a crease. So I'm going to go three quarters, 0.75, and watch what happens when I when I uh, subdivide it. Ah. It stays much more well defined, which actually 0.75 looks like it could be pretty close right there. Um, I'll try the same thing up here. You can actually do this while it's creased, but it's not quite as performant. But I'll go here and start dragging that up. Oh, that wasn't bad at all. Never mind. Look like 60% looks good there. Nice. And it just gives a more, uh, it folds it over less. So if a standard subdivision, however, whatever geometry that meets at is 100%, this is saying make that connection still there, but less. 
So I do like, since it comes up and meets the body right here, maybe I make like this one and this one, oh, this one, maybe that those will be 100% because, you know, they meet in strong with the body. And 100% just says don't crease it at all on that axis. So I get it with a nice hard uh, stop point there. But yeah, so there we go. It's looking pretty cool. Um, let's go ahead and add just a little bit of detail here. I forgot to select it, subdivide. All right, let's go ahead and grab. So one of the things that's definitely happening is, is this, if I look at my, my clown mouth here, it definitely doesn't come all the way out to the edge. Even when I subdivide, it pulls down a little bit, but I feel like that should be like here instead of here. Hmm. Now, if I come in here and I just grab this, even with vertex tools, I hit U instead of V, vertex tools. If I try to just bring that down and over, it's pulling this down with it. So I end up with this extreme bend. So that's not what I want to do. At this point, there's probably a better way to do this. I'm gonna disclaim what I'm about to do. But what I would do is turn my hidden geometry on and I can see where these, these lines are, right? So these lines, I wanna make sure I honor. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I want to break this like there and I want to get rid of that. And that means I'll get rid of all of this and then I'll connect this back up like this. Uh, let's see. I'll He's putting her in like manual that. folks. That's right. That's exactly right. And then I will connect this back to here and this piece right here. I want to hide cause I want it to be like this. I want it to be one of those edges. So a quad, the actual, like a real quad de definition is not just a square piece. It is a square piece that's broken and it can exist outside of a single plane. So in order to break it, I don't want to have this one single piece or, or this, this hard edge right here. So what I'll do is I'll grab that edge, go to entity info and turn on soft, smooth, and turn off casts shadow. This is just a thing. This is not a SketchUp thing. This is part of the, the extension that says an edge that has cast shadow turned off is the, the dividing line in a quad. That's how a quad is defined. So if I turn off hidden now, I end up with that. So I do have a triangle right here. This is not a quad, but like I said, the sub D engine is actually okay with triangles every once in a while. So let's take that. I'm gonna go ahead and save and subdivide. It looks okay. This got weird. I didn't, I didn't do something right, so I'm going to undo. All right, so here's my problem here. This shape right here is now one, two, three, four, five edges. See that? Too many. Broke it. So because this is the nose cone, I'm going to just kind of have geometry die into that. So I'll just do that, and then we'll see. There we go. We're back to kind of where we were at before. This looks better. Something still weird is happening. Now, this is what's going to happen because I went through that was somewhat destructive. It was somewhat that was destructive modeling. I deleted <laughs> stuff and put it back. That's like the definition of destructive modeling. Mm -hmm. uh, if I look at my creased geometry right now, look what look where my creases are. So my crease is here, which is 60 here, which is 100. And this line carried through also at 100. So I want to grab that line and put that back to zero. Now I want to grab this line, put that back up to 60, like the other line was. I, I've seen a lot of people end up with weird geometry when they're subdividing. And by a lot of people, I mean, I do it all the time. Why is that being so weird? Why is that not smooth? It tr sketch or, or, or uh, uh, sub D and SketchUp try to hold on to the crease geometry that you defined. And uh, it's possible if you're seeing something like this, that that's what happened. Check your, check your crease lines and see if they're hanging out where they shouldn't be. So I do that. That should be a lot better. Success. Success. That's right, baby. Woo. Look at that. All right. Um, this guy over here, that's actually, that's scoop. I think it's probably what it's called. It's a little bit bigger. You can see it's actually kind of rounded all the way around. I might go in and put that kind of geometry in. I want to make sure to get my broad strokes done first, though. I want to make sure I get this looking like a plane and not some kind of like abused fish corpse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right. man. It's a goal, Matt. I'm going to try. <laughs> it's 
P-51 is known as the abused fish corpse of uh, planes. <laughs> uh, sometimes words just happen. Okay. <laughs> Let's look at where this wing comes out. Um, so the wing comes out as luck would have it. Not really luck. This is pseudo planned, planned-ish from here to here. So it's across these right here. Um, as I think about like, how do I want that to join in? Hmm. Uh, I definitely have to think a little bit. So I think what I would probably do, see how it, it kind of comes all the way down. And then what, what sort of happens, if I look at this, all of these pieces are broken. So this makes it extra difficult. Thanks Ooh. a lot. Um, I'm going to get destructive again. There's probably a more elegant way to do this, but sometimes there's this, this function called brute force modeling, which is the get or done method. Uh, and I'm kind of a fan of it. <laughs> sure, bring in Larry the Cable Guy and... Uh, there's get... about to be some kind of dump. <laughs> yep, so. this is going to be a dump. <laughs> All right, I will do something like that. Okay, so this is going to be my wing, these three pieces. Uh, I need to sub-D them up, so I'm going to just go in the same direction and draw my diagonals. I realize there's somebody out there who's better at this. Hornox, I don't know if Hornox or Box are watching, and they're like, why are you doing it that way? Oh, there's such an easier way to do this. Uh, but this is what I do. And I can, at this point, make some very quick cleanup, because I can grab these pieces, these piece, boom, boom, and then just... Clean up on. on aisle five. That's where I roll. It must be where Aaron's at. All right. Then I'm going to take those and I'm just going to option copy them straight up, which in this case is the red axis because I took this model and flipped it on its side. And then all I'm going to do is with lines going straight back, I have no additional geometry created at this point. So I can drop lines straight back. It's going to create uh, rectangles. There's no shape to this wing yet. It's just to get that geometry out there. Like I said, I know there's probably a better way to do this, but for what I'm doing right now, that gets me a chunk of geometry to, to model with. Lemon or wing? You got it. I don't know what you said. Lemon? <laughs> lemon? <laughs> lemon wing? Ooh, yum. Is that like lemon meringue? That mm, sounds kind of similar. That does sound good. All right, so with this one, we'll bring it out to here, which is where it starts to transition right there. And at this point, uh, so here's here's kind of a cool thing that that uh, that happens. So that is not none of this is in plane, right? So this all this stuff uh, because I took that body, I kind of ended up a little bit off of each other. But one of the things I can do with vertex tools is I can select all this geometry, and then I can tell it. I got to remember where it is uh, in vertex tools to make planar. Make planar says take all those points and put them flat together. I, I, I personally, I don't care if it's in, you know, in plane of, a, of, of an axis. Uh, all I care is that all of these, these faces are on the same plane. So I can do stuff like, you know, grab, go like this, get rid of this, and go option, push, pull, to create segments where I want to break the geometry. What was the, um, the, uh, uh, Jesus, uh, the action that you just did, the command that you used? So it's make planar. Okay. Cause in I vertex tools, I was, I was just a little bit confused. Cause I thought the, this whole time you were taking this geometry and making it planar. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. Ah, we should probably call it at that point, guys. We're losing it. Thank Please you very subscribe. much. Good night. <laughs> subscribe now. Okay. Press the oh. button. Please press the button. Oh, boy. Yeah. Yep. Yep.
All right. But no, that looks uh, definitely looking wingy, wingisk coming together. Very nice, very nice. It's a P-51, which is an old fighter plane that happens to be Tom Cruise's personal plane. Oh, really? Hadn't heard that. <laughs> See, this is Tom Cruise. You're familiar with Thomas Cruise uh, the of the of the films? You know Tom Cruise, right? You guys? Tom Cruise? You've heard? You've heard Tom Cruise. Movie star? I thought he was a stuntman. All right. Film stuntman and uh, plane right. rider. <laughs> and he ride on the <laughs> outside of that plane. Yeah. Building plane. climber. Yeah. Do the man the man does it all. That's what I would that's what he told me. Did his mouth look weird when he was telling you that? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> a little awkward. How about that video, huh? Who's not gonna be able to sleep tonight? Woo! <laughs> that was that was really something. All right. Hey, it's over now. It's break and relax. It only lives on in your nightmares. That's right. Okay, cool. So that's looking kind of cool. Let's see what happens when I subdivide. So something I want to point out is like when I get narrower geometry can sometimes pull a little bit more. So I'm kind of concerned. I'm not quite sure what's going to happen here. I'm going to double check to make sure I don't have any non-quad. Okay, come on. I need a shortcut for perspective because... Oh, there we go. All right. Looks pretty cool. I realize I, I don't have like, uh, there's a little bit of an upward angle. I'll get to that in just a sec, but I just want to make sure I don't have any non quads. Oh, here's one. Ooh, Spotted. actually, this works perfect. Let's see what, is it, what we got here, of course, because I can get rid of that and then I can connect this point back to this point. And then, actually, let's go the other way. Uh, so here, here's another opportunity for learning this is another the Tim. more you know issue uh, <laughs> so this piece of geometry right here i'll go ahead and give it the sub d treatment uh see how it the geometry that creates is going to change the subdivision geometry so see how that pulls in right there so these two pieces kind of pull up to it uh i can reverse that there's actually a button to do it in oh these buttons are ui is getting smaller and smaller the older i get guys uh so i can turn it <laughs> and see that way when i do that that diagonal actually comes proud of the surface it comes out from the surface and when i flip it back it gets concave so depending on the geometry i actually want there i can control that so if i subdivide this i'm going to see it more pull in suck in there whereas if i switch it and subdivide i have it come out more there it's subtle but there's a there's a difference in the final geometry uh depending which way my subdivision goes because my subdivided pieces that diagonal will go the same geometry or the same direction as the original geometry so just another thing to think about there as you do that all right so when i did that let's go ahead and let's go back to a top view and let's go back into parallel I can see kind of how that that all pulled together. That actually stayed pretty close on the on the front. Uh, mm -hmm. I need to bring it back a little bit. We can see at the bottom where it was thinner. As I was saying, the thinner geometry pulled up more. So I can see it actually pulled up quite a bit. So what I'm going to probably want to do here is pull this whole face down even further uh, before. I subdivide again and same thing here this geometry at the front needs to come down just a bit so let's go ahead and do that get rid of x-ray let's do it and vertex tools just pull that down yep. like that and then these are actually edges i i'm seeing some cleanup that i have to do as well so i'll get that also, let's pull it back like that. So the cleanup I can see right here, obviously, is an issue. I, I did not subdivide this or not break that. So in this case, I would probably just do something like this. Again, I'm not creating quads, I'm creating triangles, but the subdivision engine is not going to make weird ugliness of those triangles. 
unlike this thing right here. I forgot to go in and break this back into pieces before I finished moving that stuff around. So break it up, break it up. There we go. All right, I back in that uh, parallel projection view. Can't do a thing. I'll get you every time. Can't, apparently. Right, so something's not, I don't think I did that. I don't think I did that line. Correct. Ooh, that's ugly too. Oh, hey, look at all the ugliness I created. I got some spider webs. You need to clean out the cobwebs in your uh, plane <laughs> over here. Apparently so. There we go. Something weird is going here. Well, no, maybe, maybe not. Let's just try to let's stitch it real quick. See what happens. Oh, stitching. Stitch. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's take that and subdivide it. All right. Much closer. So I got to get stretched up a little bit this way. And then what we'll do, the next couple things I'm going to do, I'm going to go in and crease the edge of the wing. So where it comes in meets the body is not quite so... Uh, so it's, it's a little bit smooth here. You can see right here, it's a little, got a little bit of a smoothness, but uh, not quite this much. Um, so I'll, I'll do that and then uh, we'll get a little bit of a, a raise to the wings. So let's You also have people in the chat saying that uh, the wing needs some curvature on the top and uh, without it, oh, we're right. for some inverted lift geometry. Psh, don't want that, I, I guess. Laminar wing. Um, mm. Uh. <laughs> but I'm fortunately built as a fighter. that's going to be fairly easy to do because I can just grab this right here, use vertex tools, bring it straight up. And that's going to give me that, that proper wingy shape. Bingo. How you doing? That's right. That's how good we are. All right. Nice. Oh, I love it. Love when a plan comes together. All right. And I'm just going to come here, click around. Uh, uh-uh-uh. Right under here. Oh, not that. I don't want the whole face. If you crease while you have an entire face selected, it will actually crease all four sides, which is kind of nice sometimes because you can, if you want to have a surface that you want to keep defined and have it less sub-DE, sub you can do mm -hmm. that. Oops, I hit the wrong button. I did my pre-selection and then ruined everything. All right, let's... Okay. Maybe ruining everything's a little bit drastic, but let's go grab those guys and then hit crease. All right, let's watch this. Watch this. Watch this magic happen. Look at that. I don't want to quite go to one, but I do want a fairly good. Let's go to like eighty percent. Cool. All right. So you said you love it when a plan comes together. Ove says he loves it when a plane comes together. Nailed it. Thank you, Ove, for catching me. Ugh, sometimes I disappoint myself. Blame that on COVID also. Why not? Got it. All right, I'm going to grab these three edges right here. And I'm going to use vertex tools to drop them a little bit. Get that geometry kind of a little bit more merging into the curve uh what is this what 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 be what what what, what be no i don't i'm not <laughs> i probably enjoyed that more than i should have i don't know what it was <laughs> but i i i liked it i identified with it i feel it yeah. i feel that sound i oh mm, uh. i'm just trying to go based on vibes you know Match the vibe shift. Oh, definitely got that. Bless you. Wait, okay. I definitely thought that was more like, uh, oh, bless you versus like, <laughs> like Joe, Jody's. Oh, bless your heart. He says that to me a lot, <laughs> all the time. Oh boy, you make me furious. All right, I like this. You guys, this is coming together. This, I mean, we're not. We're oh, dang. Whoa! Okay, that shouldn't happen. Funky. All right. Oh, it's cool. It's looking cool. 
，我们即。All right, I'm going to grab another copy of this. Bring it down here. We're going to flip it vertical. Grab a middle point, line it up with a. There's a middle point there. Okay. For the U.S. Army Air Forces, the Mustang flew bomber escort. History. So many things I learned on this show. Well, I guess I assume I learn things. I really haven't taken a lot of time to validate anything that is said, played, whatever. Well, I'm, you're teaching yourself how to make this plane. That's true. That's something. So you're teaching and learning at the same time. That's a lot. Yeah, double duty. That's true. There we go. Get that kind of in line. And see right here, the wing is definitely getting bigger. So same thing, vertex tools. S stretch that out a little bit. Mm. Take it back down. That wing is getting... Bigger and Leon's getting larger. So, so, in case you're wondering, it's not that kind of airplane. Oh, that's a good one. That's that's just a good show. Straight up fun, ridiculousness. The Zucker Brothers, right? I think so. I believe that sounds airplane. great. Did anybody not catch that reference? Because if so, you got homework. Hit the books, hit the showers, why don't you? Um, do they also do hot shots? Is that? Because I know Lloyd, Lloyd Bridges is in both, but I don't know if they did hot shots or not. Uh, that's, on, that's on some service, uh, Hulu or something. That showed up in my suggested stream at one point, and I was like, oh, man. Charlie Sheen, Charlie Sheen sta slapstick. It's a weird scene, man. Oh, Abrams. So yes, half of the writing team, Zucker. Uh, a third of the writing team, pardon me. Right. This roughed in geometry is starting to look pretty sweet. Um, sweet. Go through and fine tuning. Um, let's get some, uh, let's carry on with these wings. Let's get some tail, let's put some tail feathers on this bird. I don't know if that's <laughs> a valid, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, oh, it definitely is. Shake your tail feather. Yeah, that's, that, that's an aviation term, pretty sure. All right. So I'm not sure I know how to answer that. <laughs> you and me both, computer lady voice. <laughs> um, Access denied. That's the one. Please try again. Okay. All right. Too much. Too much of a bad thing. Whoa. Okay. All right. So, oops. I don't want to. I don't want to do that. I just want to see my hidden geometry. So. Here's something, here's a thing I can do. I want to bring, I want to like pull right out of these two. I want a piece that I can pull up as being this, this tail. So what I can do is I'm going to try this and see how this works. I grab these pieces. Can I do that? Not quite. Let's see if I go to two. Not still. Well, not Lenny, with the uh, with the vocabulary reach here, retrices is what the larger feathers on a bird's tail are called. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but uh, I was just amazed at what a pull. We, I, I'll just tell you guys. I'll be totally straightforward on the fact that like it blows my mind sometimes the collective 
information and knowledge that uh, our viewer base has. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say it's useful necessarily, but it's there. You guys know some things about some things. Pub trivia. Absolutely. I want to have you guys on my team. I feel like we can take any stream on. <laughs> we gotta gotta find another another stream to to throw that up against. Cause, oh whoa hey wait back that up. I I don't. That's a good question. You guys watch our stream. Are there other streams that you guys watch that you like? It's okay to say no. <laughs> Could be the one and only. Steve does point out here that uh, they got to be flatter on the bottom than the top, or else you would fly upside down. Are you talking wing? Are we talking wings still? I made I a lot of geometry like that, at this point. That that back part, or like the plane in general, or I just read them as they. No, I, know. They I, know. I know. I don't want to disregard anything, but uh, there's a good chance that uh, this may look kind of pretty, but maybe not fly. She may not fly, my friends. Yeah, no one uh, pictured you as an aeronautical engineer on the stream today, more of a 3D modeler. That's right. I'll do my best, though. I will do my best. I will keep trying. Uh, Lenny says... Uh, when talking about other streams, are there any others? That was the proper answer. Thank you very much, Lenny. Aaron approved. Um, Juan asks, do you have any recommendations for eye care? I model 10 hours straight every day. Must be having some eye strain over there. Keggy suggests uh, regular breaks. Um, OMG, those... these are the old man glasses? Yeah. <laughs> are they like blue light glasses? Yeah, they got the little blue light 1.0 magnification. Uh, yeah, so if I if I spend too much time on here, the camera's too far away. This really causes, uh, that'll give me a headache if I have to look at the monitor like that. But if I'm sitting there for a lot of time, uh, I definitely throw some glasses on because my eyes get tired too. Good call. My so young, are those readers? Or are yeah. those like, what? Are, okay. Actually, yeah, I don't even see it, but readers.com. Oh. $30. Money well spent. I will yeah, say. Yeah, Juan, check it out. Readers.com. You can probably get some without magnification if uh, just strain is the only thing you're worried about. But um, yeah, there you go. Uh, but yeah, all, all the normal stuff, the step away from your computer, all that stuff is totally valid as well. Uh, it's hard sometimes. But I don't, know, I don't know if anybody out, does anybody here use the, any? Uh, uh, any of those apps that come up and they tell it tells you like once an hour, take a break or something like that because I've, I've had some coworkers who've used that sort of thing. I've never done it myself. I've had, yeah, I've seen co our coworkers use those kind of things before too, and they always are annoyed and turning it off. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> totally <laughs> true. <laughs> ah, dang it. <laughs> uh right when i'm trying to work i'm like isn't the kind of the point that you you know respect <laughs> it and you like take a break when it says to nope just get irritated yeah oh juan says they do have uh computer glasses but the eyes still still hurt mm. yeah unfortunately that's just comes with the territory i feel like alas that might be your crossed bear Flux, maybe some kind of screen app that makes, you know, uh, I know a lot of computers do the thing where they adjust to the natural environment to make your, uh, or not the natural environment, the external environment, you know, based on time of day or whatever the color temperature is in the room to try to ease the eye strain. Um, so if you don't have that set up, maybe that, but yeah, screens are not, uh, not ideal looking at for long periods of time, unfortunately. All right. We have a question here. Hello, guys. I just found out about Rhino. Is it better than SketchUp? Um, so we would push. say no. <laughs> we work for SketchUp. Um, <laughs> but they're, of course, different tools. Uh, they do, they, it's 3D modeling in, in different ways. So 
uh, you know, people probably would use them for different jobs. Depends on what you're what you're trying to go for. But we wholeheartedly endorse SketchUp over any and all 3D modeling softwares out there every day of the week, including Friday, which is SketchUp Live Day, not Rhino Live Day. So <laughs> take that. Well, obviously, <laughs> we got a day. We got a day in it for us. <laughs> Heck, we got a Dave just for the show. Um, so. I know some people like like Rhino for different stuff. I think uh, where the big the big thing where you see you know a difference in use case is architectural. I think people use Rhino end up using it for like uh, organic or parametric type modeling, whereas SketchUp ends up you know being used more for things like uh, standard building modeling kind of stuff. So they're different tools. Mm -hmm. But not to say you shouldn't be able to go back and forth between them and, you know, Absolutely. Um, you can definitely import uh, Rhino geometry through intermediary file formats, if that's something you're looking to do. Yep. All right. And let's get that back on the ground. All right. Let's subdivide her. She's looking good. She's looking good. All right, I'm going to get a little bit more geometry here. And there's a couple more pieces I want to get. Not, not calling anybody out, but what good is a plane without a cockpit? That dome Ooh. on top is like totally necessary. So we're going to get that in. Tyson, I'm holding Tyson back right now from running over there. and getting I'm teasing. I'm teasing, Tyson. Your of ego's course. writing checks your body can't cash. <laughs> That's a clip from Hot Shots. So it's it's on it's on trend, it's on brand, and it certainly is on topic. I don't like this. I don't like this. This is what I was talking about earlier, I think. I don't like the way my uh subdivision is coming in right here. I'd rather have it pop outward. Mm -hmm. So I think oh no, that's just because Who's the jerk who did this? All right, let's fix this. <laughs> and jerk store called. <laughs> I'm not you. Oh, so victorious in his failure. All right, that looks better. Victory! Mission accomplished. Um, Juan says, uh, use a SketchUp for architecture and 3D printing. Nice. There you go. Uh, so that's I'm good sure, to I'm hear. Sure. Uh, it works. Whoa, was that? Is that it's a working. Do you want I heard? Exactly. Okay, Math G51 was a little more realistic. Is there an echo in here? <laughs> I thought it sounded identical. All right, so I'm going to, I want to get this point out here. So I'm going to just do some exaggerated geometry. I'm going to pull it up like this. See what that does, how that pulls back. All right, that's closer. Studio RT Cool. I think this is in reference to the Rhino discussion. Says, I know an architect who uses it for bent mass timber construction. A lot of curves involved. Interesting to hear. Uh, get the curvies in there every once in a while. Danny talking about um, screens. I personally try not to stare at screens for more than about 10 minutes, but I will say that the blue light glasses help noticeably in my case. Yeah, I've heard that. I've heard quite a few people who, I mean, it's getting harder and harder, right? To, to not spend all day looking at stuff because it's just kind of the world we've created. We're all, we're all especially if we're in this line of, of work, it's hard to 3D model without looking at a computer screen. So, yeah, you work all day looking at a screen, then it's like, oh, finally, I can kick back and watch, watch a screen. TV. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. But I mean, compared to a phone screen, I heard somebody online compare to like 
compared to looking at your phone, TV is basically like books at this point. Oh yeah. Oh, cause how like often? Watching TV, or? watching like watching a TV screen is essentially the same thing as reading a book because it's a lot better than looking at your phone. Huh. I think it was a joke, but <laughs> I'm kind of uh, I'm like I I don't think that's probably too far from true though. It's it sounds, but I, I get I get the point. I get yeah. Mm-hmm. Should have played one of these. And then I play it up. No problem. Um. Okay, you said the sound sounded like a Spitfire. I have to tell you, I got that from a video that said P-51 flyby. The B model had the Merlin engine put in it, and it also had a two-stage supercharger. I, The Merlin engine is one of the few things that I have learned about this plane, was the B model, the P-51B that had uh, the Merlin engine. I don't know what it is, but I learned that that's a, that, 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 that. <laughs> <laughs> apparently it's big it, that's exactly yeah because this is what i heard by watching videos 10 minutes before the stream started is that um the engine before the merlin maybe somebody in the chat knows the uh the exact name of it uh allison maybe or something like that was not strong enough to uh lift the plane over fifteen thousand feet which is where the bombers uh were flying which is these were of course as you learn from the uh from the drop earlier was primarily used as a bomber escort. Um, so you needed to be able to fly high. And so these 12 V12 Merlin engines, Rolls Royce, uh, made by Packard in Detroit were necessary to get the lift needed over 15,000 feet. Thank you very much for listening. That's what really made this plane zing when it finally got the Merlin engine and the two stage supercharger. Zing. I like it. I like, zing I like my planes to zing. Right, oh, look at that thing. Look at that thing. All right. It's got a little bit more. Uh, take uh, these lines here. We're going to crease them. Just all the way. 100%, baby. Look at that. Crease that bubble up. It's looking pretty mean. I kind of like the low poly look. It looks like a PS1 fighter uh, <laughs> game or something. All right. So this is going to come down even more. I'm trying to get that, that shape of the cockpit raises up. Uh... Yeah, apparently. Okay. So one last thing about this. Uh, well, maybe not one last thing, but more about this plane is that originally the cockpit uh, was kind of like an extension of the the fuselage so the back part just came in but then the uh pilots complained of not being able to see 100 or 360 degrees around um because like the part of the actual plane was blocking their view so that's why they get this bubble fuselage which added a little bit more drag so the top speed went down Ugh. but um they were able to see a lot better so bringing out the bubble makes sense I like that i like that All right, so here I got that, that thing I was talking about. See the way this is cutting this way? I definitely want that to cut the other way, so I'll use that reverse quad. There we go. Oh, yeah, that is the stuff. <laughs> you know, the crazy thing about these things is, like, I don't know if you've ever seen any of these at a museum or something like that or going up to them. They're not big. This cockpit's not, I mean, like, just wider than than a human's hips and shoulders. Mm -hmm. And then how fast did this thing go with that Merlin engine? It was fast. Oh, look, butter knives. I think like the absolute top speed was somewhere in the low 500s, but like cruising speed of about 430, I think. Maybe the top speed. Anyways, yeah. So fast, in other words. Oh, Keggy was joking because uh, these have the same engines as the Spitfires. Um, very good. Got the Merlin. So sometimes those jokes uh, miss on the uneducated <laughs> that are out there. Should have known because we we did the Spitfire stream two weeks ago, or you know, you think I 
retain some of that information, but uh, what are you going to do? Uh, Domenico is tuning in from Italy. Good to see you. Thanks for swinging by. Oops. Um, and we had a request from Juan here as well to someday model something from Halo. So I will, thanks for the request. I'll put that on the list here. Do some, some fun sound drops for that one too. Um, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that's the one. <laughs> um, did you ever play any of the Halo games? I did. I was, I thoroughly enjoyed Halo. Do you have like a, a certain one that was like your, your big one that you played a lot? I think so. Uh, fun story. The, when the first one came out. Halo Combat Evolved. That was the one. Halo CE to the inner, you know. You know who you are. <laughs> yeah. uh, it, 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 fun game. I got it on Xbox. Uh, and uh, my cousin and I were hanging out one night. And uh, we just kind of started playing it. We decided we were going we to beat it on the hardest level. Two player. We <laughs> played through the whole thing. Like one of the mm -hmm. last boards and uh my daughter who's like five or six walked into the room and i was like oh you got to go back to bed and she's like it's morning time <laughs> we sat there and played for like 12 hours without really noticing and uh Didn't even notice uh it was good it was good stuff oh, yes yeah, but that'd be a fun one that'd be fun yeah i can get you sucked in for sure a lot of the a lot of cool um cool vehicles um, yeah, certainly. there's definitely some some fun stuff that could be modeled. The most recent version or most recent uh, game just came out recently. Is that right? Yeah, but I guess not. I guess, well, I guess within like last year maybe. But uh, yeah, so real quick on this uh, propeller, I'm mm -hmm. giving it a little bit of a twist because I know that happens. I don't have a real detailed view of this, so I'm just going to do something that looks okay. Uh, but we're going to twist it over a little bit, and then I'm going to get this back in line with uh, the rest. So it's not just twisted, but something like that. There we go. And then I'm gonna delete this. That way it'll stay flat on that end. And if I grab all this make component and subdivide it, there we go. I'll take that now. Here, we'll let's... So let's I don't know it. what uh, exactly this was in relation to. It's a couple, maybe a couple minutes ago, but uh, Keenan said interfaces will be a problem. Um, so I don't know if you're running into any issues that could be interfaces. I'm not let's sure. Let's peek inside. Let's, let's look. Ooh. Delete, delete. Look at that. Uh, yeah, but it did. Good it did job. have. Oh. See, it's a little more harsh there than it should be, and that is that interface. You're absolutely 100 percent right, Keenan. So let's unsubdivide and resubdivide. That should be a little smoother there. Yeah, that corner smoother. All right. With that, I'm gonna grab it from. Oh, let's say here-ish. I'm gonna stick it. Also here-ish. And then I'm going to do a rotate from the middle of this point right here. Rotate 90 degrees, 3x. Oh, she's coming together. Zing. Awesome. All right. Uh, okay, I guess I do that in kind of a weird way and make that into a new component. Take that whole thing right over here. I'll come in here, option copy that over like that. Scale. Nope, I didn't use flip along and that's because I wanted to look like I was a smart guy. All right. <laughs> 
Anybody don't who's let, about to uh, say flip it. along make a fool out of you. That's right. All right. So we're getting close. I'm so you guys. I, I do want. I do want to acknowledge there. I know there's a lot of detail that I'm kind of skipping over and some spots I could clean up some more. I do want to get a finished model. Uh, we're just about an hour and a half now. So but I want to give myself like 10, 15 more minutes to get a finished model. But there's a couple things specific I have to do before that happens. So, uh, pl you know, bear with me here. Um, so it's interesting when you're modeling a half of a thing, you get to a point where you come back and you look at it and you're like, oh, this looks odd or this looks weird. So as I was modeling it, it didn't really bug me that much. But now that I got this in here, this face right here, like especially right here, it's looking a little hippie to me. So I want to kind of suck that in. Hips. Yeah. yeah. So it doesn't, it's definitely got a nice smooth taper. So I want to pull that in. Another thing that's happening, you can see it right, this ridge right here and definitely in the cockpit, that ridge right there. That's because I'm still maintaining two separate halves. Uh, what I want to end up doing is taking those pieces and joint together so that Sub-D does smooth that, that section down a little bit. Uh, so we'll get that. That will get cleaned up in the final step. Before I do that, though, I want to clean up this curve right here. So I want this to, it looks pretty good here, and then it just kind of stays straight and then jumps back. I want kind of a smooth curve from here all the way up to here. The way this is coming in makes me wonder a little bit if I've got some crease in here or something. So I'm going to come in here, check my crease lines. No, nothing, nothing weird. Okay. Uh, one thing I could do, let's unsubdivide this. I could actually take this edge right here and quad that up. Let's see if that, that helped. It made it a little bit smoother there. I still have to pull it in though. All right, so let's go, let's get vertexy with this thing. Uh, I'm going to take this one. I'm going to hit vertex tools. I'm going to, just to, just to play, I'm going to go ahead and rotate it a little bit like that much and then suck it in. And then I guess I'll just actually start with this, just this one point, pull this one point back and see what it does for me. That might actually have been Definitely enough. Let's see. Looks slimmer. So that made a huge difference. Um, so there's some stuff happening. I'm going to point it out. I'm not going to be able to get to all of it, but you'll see some of these because I'm starting to crease stuff and that kind of start. You can kind of think of subdivision as like a big like rubber sheet. And as you start pulling in different directions, you start to get creases and that kind of stuff. So as I look at the shadows, I can see I got a weird crease going on here caused or, or weird like fold kind of shadow caused from, you know, where I was creasing this piece right here. Same thing right here where I have those spots that I might want to end up trying to smooth out a little bit. I think I could do it easy enough by just bringing this line back in slightly. Let's see if I grab this right here, use vertex tools, just, just pull it in a bit like that, just a touch. Let's see if I subdivide that. Yeah, that got a little better. Still got kind of a weird bump right there. I think I could get, I think I can iron that out though. Um, I think actually, if I just maybe even pull this up a little bit, that might help. Let's see. Better, better, but not better, but not best. So this is kind of one of the things that you play with, with subdivision. So going back to what Tyson was talking about, uh, if I don't want to do this kind of mess, what, a couple things could have happened. One thing I could have done is I could have modeled this bubble as a separate piece, like I did with the propellers, and just put it on it afterwards. That would have kind of skipped over some of the stuff that I'm running into right now because I'd be able to keep this as one continuous plane. By coming in and breaking it, I ended up adding extra geometry, a uh, little bit of an issue there or potential issue there. Not something I couldn't clean up again, but it's it's that kind of stuff. It's going in and, and kind of fudging stuff, pushing it a little bit. Uh, so this is basically, I would want this to kind of be one continuous line, which actually, now that I look at it, may be as simple as taking these two and pulling them up a little bit. So are these all the quads? Like, this is what it's made out Sorry. of right here? Yeah. So yeah, isn't that it. piece that you were saying is weird? Is that not... Is it not a quad? This piece right here? 
the piece that was like oh you're right this guy right here is not yeah. a quad oh blame covid for that too <laughs> hey sars cov to get over here you're in big trouble mister yeah look at that there's my problem all right i mean could be part of my problem i i you know somebody told me i have more than one problem i would not be surprised <laughs> <laughs> Take that, here of that. So divide again. It's a good thing. Good thing we got teamwork going on here. That's what it's all about. Oh yeah, yeah. that that did make a difference. See that? That could be my issue right up here as well. Let's 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 see. Let's let's okay. investigate. That is easy enough. Look at that. That's all I got to do to unquad that or to requad that. All right. It helped. Yeah. So there's definitely some stuff that I could. This is a little bit a little bit of a great white tail thing going on here. This needs to get thinned up. So let's uh, do just a, just a touch more work here. Uh, let's grab this right here. Actually, let's just go. Let's grab all of this. I think if I just squish that in significantly. Just trim it up a little bit. There we go. That looks more. So I can use this for my body. You know, it's like just uh, have slow me down the middle and just, just kind of uh. slim it, up, slim it up around the midsection a little bit. There we go. <laughs> Get the vertex All right. tools out. I think that's looking that's looking pretty cool. So yeah, like I said, there's there's definitely more detail we could throw in here, um, but I want to get a complete plane and not a detailed chunk of a plane. Just a little bit of shade. A little bit of shade. Let's uh, so let's take that and let's let's merge this thing. So when you merge two halves together, you can still it'll still be a sub D model. So I can still do editing. The difference is if I want to move one side of that, you know, if I want to move this up a little bit or something like that, I got to make sure to do both sides one after another or do them together so that both both uh, halves stay the same. Not a big deal. Just an extra step to keep conscious of. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. I'm going to grab these two halves. I'm going to make a new component. Call it two halves. Go into that, grab both of these, and explode them. Now I have one component that I can subdivide and see I get much smoother geometry around the middle. Uh, like I said, still uh a sub d model so i can still go in and edit any of that geometry but you can see right up here it's not perfect i mean there's an opportunity there's a little bit of a bump here i could clean up uh but then i don't have that weird uh peak what will happen is when you have those two you'll either get a peak or a butt crack where the pieces meet together where it'll go in crease i guess they call it a crease <laughs> a peak or a crease no. I just, Definitely I mean, it crack. does. It looks like this and it runs along length of something. It's, it's a crack. Um, <laughs> but yeah, but that, that gets us real close to what we want. Um, I think at this point I will come in and grab this guy, pull him down a skosh. That's better. But yeah, so you get, you get the idea. Now, again, if I was, if I wanted to like take this and, and more detail than this, I would go, I, there's plenty more I would do, but in, in the interest of wrapping this up in a timely manner, uh, I'm going to take this and we're going to go up a subdivision level. See what happens. Yeah. See, Always it just got smoother. The, uh... Yeah. Let's go Ooh, one more. Super smooth. Smooth like butter. So, Actually, this is this is a great thing to point out. Uh, you may have models that don't benefit from going to the highest level of subdivision. So let me let me let me look at that again. So if, as I look at this, let's go ahead and turn off our lines. So we're just looking at this, and if I flip between level two and level three, little bit of a difference down here where there's some creasing. It gets a little bit a little bit nicer but not a huge difference. Let's try level three, level four. 
It's going to take just a second. Max it out. So again, I just put four times as many pieces of geometry into this model as I had before. I don't know, is it worth it? That versus this. I'm just pointing this out because I don't it's know, something boss, I can't see a big difference. That's exactly right. That's the point. Uh, as you're doing this sort of thing, you may not want to go. It seems like higher level of subdivision means you're going to get a better model. It's not necessarily mean that. It means you're going to get a heavier model. You're going to have every time you increase, you multiply the number of edges, the number of faces by four. So it gets heavier, bigger, might not make a big difference. So just something to think about as you're doing this. That looks pretty good. I'm going to do the same thing for this guy. I'm going to come in and grab him and let's let's bump him up. I feel like I still have still faces in there. Hey. I think the problem was I uh I deleted them while in sub while it was subdivided. So oh. that was not how to do it. There we go. Look at that geometry. Me. Ooh, that's smooth. I had turned out pretty sweet, you guys. I kind of like that. Um, so, oh, look, it's like a dog fight. Yeah. They're in formation. So, uh, last <laughs> thing. Uh, I'm going to copy it. Is it a group? That's component. I'm, I'm going to make this unique real quick. So this does have uh, these lines on it. So I can at any point unsubdivide or resubdivide this. If there's a point where I don't want to maintain that anymore or I want to get rid of these lines or that sort of thing, it is really as easy as exploding the geometry. So if I decide I'm not going to ever want to mess with this anymore, uh, I can come in here. Um, I can do, I can select everything and I can soften and smooth edges. And I can do that. One moment. Uh, to get rid of those, those edges. In my experience, it can still behave kind of weird because the sub D data is still in there. It's still holding onto it. So like they'll, they'll come back at some point. But if you really want to like abandon it completely, uh, what you can do is you can take it and explode it. When you explode it, you are dumping all the sub D information. You're basically making a brand new mesh. And now that's all this is. This is just a SketchUp mesh. Sub D info is gone. Uh, and I'm, I'm done at that point as far as, uh, sub D modeling. Again, it's just a SketchUp model. So if you want to go in and you want to put, uh, materials on there, or you want to go in and add additional pieces, you know, separately model, uh, landing gear, guns, something like that, you can still do that, but it is, uh, a, a totally SketchUp model at this point. So I would, I would deal with that any way I would like any other SketchUp model. Mm -hmm. We had a comment in here about UV mapping, um, saying UV mapping maybe gets harder as it's more subdivided. Uh, what's sure. your what's your take on that? Because because can you do it when you're actually in the like actively sub D thing, or do you have to explode it before you can start doing materials and UV mapping on it? Yeah, you I, I generally you want to do that on your final mesh, right? Because mm -hmm. that's what you're going to map is that final mesh. Uh, and the denser the mesh, the, the you know, more. <laughs> so it's all more. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've seen some stuff where people played around with uh, different extensions with divided and undivided meshes and, and having their materials on there. I'm not really sure how that works. I honestly, I UV meshes are something that I definitely need to spend more time on because uh, I don't really get them. I don't spend enough time playing with them. Uh, but yeah, I would say there's a point at which you don't want to mesh with your model. Uh, oh. <laughs> yes, there it was. See, I had it.
Definitely. I, I need a. I need. A, I need to go. I need a, a, a hand signal. All right. So in the next ten seconds, I'm gonna need a drum roll. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, uh, yeah. So uh, there we go. That, so that was. There's my model. I'm gonna. I'm gonna clean this up. I'm gonna. Uh, I will share. I will share the uh, subdivided model. I won't share. Uh, so if anybody wants to grab this and unsubdivide it, they can. Uh, I'll, I'll keep this one and put it up there uh, and then delete the rest of this mess. Let me get rid of all this. And uh, that way, if anybody wants to look at it, grab it, uh, make a change to it, they are more than welcome to. And we'll, we'll share that. I'll put it up on 3D Warehouse and share the link on the forum for you. So if you want to try it out, play with it, undivide it, redivide it, it'll be there for you. Um, yeah, any any last questions? We're right at an uh, hour and 40 minutes, so right where we should be sliding into the weekend. Yeah, that's right. Just uh, coasting, just about to land this, this fighter. Um, we did have a question about can you unwrap in SketchUp? I don't know what uh, that means like you not can, natively. Um, there are a handful of extensions that will let you do that. So I'm assuming we're, we're still talking about wrapping and taking this and making that map. Uh, there, there's a couple. Unwrapper is one. Uh, Sketch UV is that that another one uh, that will let you create those UV maps from the SketchUp model. Yeah, good call. Um, Keenan suggests, says, map it before sub D and sub D will protect UV. There you go. So yeah, that's I wasn't that was what I was not sure about because like I said, I just don't, I spend a lot of time, I mean, you guys already know this. I spend a lot of time modeling and I don't really do anything. The models don't go anywhere from here. Uh, maybe a material list or a layout or occasionally a render. But uh, yeah, I very rarely end up using my SketchUp models in something else where I would UV map it for uh, final material maps. So uh, that's cool. That's cool to learn. It's something, hey, it's an opportunity. Maybe I'll find a Basecamp class on that. There you go. Always good to be learning. Uh, yeah, if you're not familiar, Basecamp is 3D Basecamp, which is our SketchUp user conference that happens every couple of years. It's in Vancouver at the end of next month, one month from today. So last chance to get, uh, there's a discount on tickets. So uh, yeah, if you have the ability to get there and you like SketchUp, hey, you got to make it. That's right. We're going to be there. And uh, hopefully we'll see some other folks from the SketchUp Live community there. Um, but a lot of great learning, a lot of great fun. Um, we had a question here about a folder for live videos on our SketchUp channel. Uh, yes, there is a live SketchUp live playlist with all the live streams that we've had in the past. Uh, there, there. number of them. Yeah. So check it out. A lot of good knowledge in there. Um, Scott, then, Scott, yeah. real quick. Uh, I was asking if you have to have sub D to use this model. You don't. It is just a SketchUp model, so you can actually grab it. It's going to be a heavier SketchUp model because let's let's see how big this thing is. That's not terrible, but uh, yeah, it's got just shy of fifty thousand faces and just shy of I'm sorry, thirty thousand faces and fifty thousand edges. So there's quite a bit there. It's not terribly heavy, but you could use it as it is. What you won't be able to do is unsubdivide and resubdivide the model the way that I was by hitting you. You'll be able to use this geometry as exists only. But yeah, totally usable though. Very good. Oh my God, what a joy. Great model, great stream. That was fun. Cool. Well, yeah, this is... Uh, so like I said, we got uh, three more models before we'll be taking a couple weeks off to go to base camp. Uh, hang out with us next week. I don't, again, I'm not 100% sure who's gonna be modeling or what they're gonna be doing, but somebody will be here. <laughs> Two, Surprise. A week from right now, uh, modeling something in SketchUp. So come check it out. Uh, it'll be good. Uh, yeah, other than that, have a great weekend and uh, we'll see you guys later. See ya. Attention, please. Leave the building immediately. You heard him. See ya. <laughs>